The main way I like to learn my disc better is by giving it a few throws unbiased. Just throw it and see what it does for you. Maybe, maybe the disc that flies one way for your buddy is going to fly much different for you. And sometimes you have to accept that the disc isn't going to be the same for everybody. When we throw it and when you throw it, it might do something different. So don't watch your favorite pro and fall in love with that flight and think if I buy one of those and I go to the field, that's what it's going to do because it's just not going to work that way. And it's the same thing for me. So when I go to the field, I like to throw a disc a couple times back and forth and kind of get a feel for it. And then set up my markers and set up my lines and then kind of see what it does for me. After that, there's a way to analyze, do I think this disc would be a good addition to my bag or to uh, maybe a certain hole I play at my local course, anything like that. So you can kind of go through the steps of, okay, how does it fly? What does it do for me? Do I like it? Can I add it to my bag? So that's kind of the four steps that I do when I'm throwing or learning a disc. It's just going through all the things that really matter. How does it feel in my hand? The stiffness, the flex, all of that type of stuff really does matter when it comes down to using this disc or adding it to your bag. Because at the end of the day, if you're not confident with the disc, you don't like the way it feels or it's a little too soft for you, you're really never going to get the maximum results out of it. And there are plenty of great discs out there, so make sure that you're able to find one that fits the slot you're trying to fill. Don't force a disc to fill that slot even if it's not something that fits in your hand well or anything like that. So make sure when you're out here in the field, you're intentionally picking the right disc and you're giving them the right chance. Just because you throw it the first time and it maybe goes straight to the right or straight to the left, give it a few more tries. And then like I said, set up your practices, set up your references and see if you can get that disc to do what you're hoping for to add to your bag. All right, so now we're out here in the field. I'm trying to add one of these composite arrows to my bag. The way I'm gonna do this to be fair and concise is I'm gonna throw them all on the same flat angle, the same grip with the same power. That way I can eliminate any variables. It's a super nice day outside today, so I'm really gonna get a good feel for these discs. And as we go, I'm gonna throw them all the same direction with the same intent. That way, when one maybe doesn't do what I want or I really favor one over the other, I can take the last two or three to the tournament this weekend and kind of figure out which ones I want for the holes we're gonna play. Let's see how they fly. So, so far pretty reliable what I'm kind of expecting. The first one turned it a little bit, but still came out of it, which is actually what I really want. I want this disc to always be going left. And even if I make the mistake of pulling it over a little bit to the right, I still want it to fight back and go left because this is gonna be a disc I'm gonna use where there's maybe out of bounds on the right or a tree line on the right that I definitely don't want to go in. So the fact that even on that first one, I misreleased it a little bit, it's still fighting back left is definitely good. But as you can see that one there, even though it's the same disc and the same plastic, maybe that green material isn't as stable. I feel like I threw it pretty much the same and it went right and stayed right. So definitely that's going to be one of the ones that in the next exercise that I take out of the bag because no matter what, I try the other flights or angles or heights or grips. I don't want it to ever do that and go to the right. So the, that one I just threw in the first one were the same similar mistake. And that one just held right and never even tried to come back left. So that one's definitely going to be out for the rest of the competition. So when you use this method of testing discs, it becomes very, very easy to see which ones might fit best in your bag for X shot. So while I'm out here, I'm trying to release them on the same angle with the same height and the same grip just to create consistency. That way, that one disc that kind of turned and went to the right, it shows itself. I'm not, I'm not trying to throw them all different or make them fly the same. I'm kind of trying to throw them on the same angle with the same path and see what they do. So right there, as you saw, 
five of those ones did really, really good for me and what I wanted for the shot in my bag. And one of them showed itself and went to the right. It isn't a big deal. But overall, the flight of those five that you saw just go left there, exactly what I'm looking for to add to my bag. So let's try some different angles and see what we think about them. I'm gonna try these now five discs on Heiser just to practice with them, understand what they're gonna do and kind of see what's gonna happen. Sometimes you get out there on the course and the disc that you don't really plan to use for a certain shot is actually the disc you have to use for a certain shot. So it's always good to come out here and test them all on different angles and different heights. Um, that way you know when you get on the course, oh, well, I remember six months ago I threw this disc on this line and it did this, which might actually be perfect for being in a sticky situation. So I like to practice with the discs when I'm learning a new disc or trying to add one to the bag, a few different angles and a few different heights. That way I can understand best what it does, even if it's not being used for the shot I intended it to be used for.